Hello and welcome to the episode 140 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll focus on the band's first tour, the filming of more paperback writer and rain videos, and the UK premiere of Let It Be. On the 20th of May 1960, the Silver Beatles, George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, Tommy Moore on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Town Hall in Alloa, Scotland, for the first date of the Johnny Gentle tour. The Silver Beatles were never billed as such, with the posters announcing Johnny Gentle and his group, since the band was, in effect, only a backing for Gentle. The musicians had their first and only real rehearsal together, a 30-minute affair, shortly before taking the stage. As you might imagine, the first show was rather rough, but the group got better as the tour progressed. The repertoire included It Don't Matter Anymore and Raining In My Head by Buddy Holly, I Need Your Love Tonight by Evris Presley, Poor Little Fool by Ricky Nelson, I Don't Know Why I Love You But I Do by Clarence Frogman Henry, Come On Everybody by Eddie Cochran and He'll Have To Go by Jim Reeves. You might not know that the lads decided to adopt stage names for the tour. In the anthology book, McCartney explains, I became Paul Ramon, which I thought was suitably exotic. I remember the Scottish girls saying, is that his real name? That's great. Stuart became Stuart de Stahl after the painter. George became Carl Harrison after Carl Perkins. John was Long John. People have since said, ah, John didn't change his name, that was very suave. Let me tell you, he was Long John. There was none of that, he didn't change his name. We all changed our names. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now with Pete Best on drums and with Paul McCartney on bass instead of Sutcliffe, performed their 50th night of their second Hamburg engagement at the Top 10 Club. Third Hamburg engagement for the band in 1962, still with Pete Best on drums. This time, they were on the stage of the Star Club. In 1963, the Roy Orbison package tour featuring the Beatles arrived in Southampton, and more precisely, on the stage of the Gaumont Cinema. The venue is still open today, operating with the name of Mayflower Theatre since 1987. On the 20th of May 1965, John Lennon, Cynthia Lennon and director Richard Lester flew from London to Cannes to attend the local film festival. Lester's The Knack and How to Get It was in competition for, and actually won, the Grand Prix du Festival International du Film. Let me thank you, the Truth About the Beatles Girl Tumblr account for this entry. And let me thank you for being fab and showing me your enthusiasm and support by sending me messages, comments and love. If you haven't yet, please consider visiting www.simonmas.com support. No donation is too small and no shout out and linking on your social media will go unnoticed. In addition, as I told you, I am considering putting a deluxe version of the show, featuring extra content, on sale as an NFT, so you might soon be able to support me and make some money out of it. Isn't that the toppermost of the poppermost? Moving on to 1966, we find the Beatles at the Chiswick House in London to film other clips to promote Paperback Writer and Rain. In total, the band realized two color and two black and white clips for Paperback Writer and two color and one black and white clip for Rain. Meanwhile, at the EMI Studios, George Martin prepared a set of stereo mixes for the Revolver album, working between 11 am and 12.30 pm. Specifically, And Your Bird Can Sing was mixed twice, once from take 10 and once from take 6. The final version of the piece would consist of take 10, with the ending of take 6 edited on it. Dr. Rubber was also mixed twice, both times from take 7. 
I'm Only Sleeping, also mixed twice, from Take 13. For these latter two songs, the first mix ended up on the American Yesterday and Today album, and the second was reserved for the Revolver UK release. In 1967, the BBC Radio's Where It's At show included interviews with John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, privately recorded by Kenny Everett. John discussed their new Surgeon Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and the merits of automated double tracking. Ringo talked about what had happened during the last year, and Paul talked about the album and its production process. During the program, aired between 4 and 5.30 pm today, all the songs of the album, except A Day in the Life, were broadcast for the first time. As you might remember, the song had been officially banned on the 19th of May for drug references. Check out yesterday's episode of this podcast to have a laugh. Finally, in 1970, the Let It Be film premiered in UK with showings at the London Pavilion and at the Garment Cinema in Liverpool. The Beatles did not attend in either case, just as they hadn't on the 8th of May for the US premiere, as we saw in episode 128 of this podcast. While they did not show up, the London premiere included director Richard Lester, singer Mary Hopkin, EMI's Sir Joseph Lockwood, members of the Rolling Stones and Fleetwood Mac, plus Cynthia Lennon and Jane Asher respectively ex-wife of John Lennon and ex-girlfriend of Paul McCartney. This concludes today's episode. Tune in tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.